So let's look a little bit at temperatures of these teas we talked about, because obviously if we have different flow rates, we're mixing flow and we're mixing temperature. So here's a simple little form we get in front of you real quick. It's not complicated at all. But if you know the flow rates in the T's and you know the temperature, it's very easy to calculate the temperature leading. And this is probably the thing you need to spend a little time on because hot water with boilers or chill water with chiller, chillers, you need to understand these blended temperatures and what happens. So real simple, if I got 100 GPM of 40 degree water, mixing with 50 GPM of 55 degree water, I got a total flow rate of what? 150 GPM leaving. So the question is, what will be the temperature? And if you do the math here, you see that with the little form, it's a very basic formula. And I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it. You can play with this a little bit later when we're not so pressed for time. The temperature would become 45 degrees. But you need to get comfortable making that little calculation and being able to do it. I always tell everybody, if you know the flood rates to HT, go and put a thermometer there. Keep it simple. And then you can really, really have a little fun, and you can really figure out what's going on with the system if you've got a thermometer at each one of these places and you know the flow rates. So let's go to a typical little cooling coil. It could be a heating one. don't matter, but let's just use a cooling coil for the time being. Let's add some temperatures to our cooling coil. Let's see what the impact is of changing flow rates in the primary and the secondary to the actual temperatures we see. Remember, most cooling coils are going to be picked probably on a 45 degree supply. Or you could pick them on 42 or 40 or 40, whatever you want to. But on average number, it's going to be around 45 because of humidification. If you try to dehumidify the air, you've got to get the water cold enough to start getting moisture out of the air. So 44, 45, let's just take 45 as a pretty common number. So this cooling coil has been designed on 45 degrees. So here we go. I got a primary supply rate of 45 degrees at 120 GPM. If I take it to my first T, you know it's T law, if I take 120 GPM out, that leaves no flow in the green common pipe. And the 120 GPM going at my cooling coil is at what water temperature? 45 degrees. If I got a full load, I'll come out at 55 degrees on the return. I've got 120 GPM, 55 degree water going into the second T, mixing with zero GPM of 45, and I got 120 GPM leaving of 55 degree water. I got a full 10 degree load on this building, and I'm seeing a full 10 degree 45 primary supply and a 55 degree return going back to my jokes. So you kind of see how that works when the flow rates are the same. Now what happens if I start changing my own flow rates? That's the question. What would happen if I did not balance the secondary? Now you see I've jumped the secondary up from 120 to 180 GPM because you didn't balance. You didn't have a circuit set. You didn't balance. And balancing is critical. Here's one example of why balancing is so important. And let's just take a quick look. So the secondary circuit has not been balanced. It's flowing 180 GPM. The sign was 120 and a 10-degree delta T. And the BTUs are not going to change. But we've increased from 120 GPM to 180, so the delta T has got to go down. Let's just check this all out. So first of all, let's get all your numbers up here so you see. What I want to ask you is, is what impact will overflowing the secondary circuit have on the supply? chill water temperature. What impact will not balancing and have an overflowing on the secondary chill water loop have to the supply chill water temperature to that cooling coil? And what is that going to do with dehumidification? What's that going to do to you maintaining conditions in your space? Think about it. Okay, primary supply chill water is 45 degrees. I got a flow rate of 120 GPM to that first T. I take out 180. Yes, I can take 180 out if I have reverse flow of 60 GPM coming from right to left. So here we go. I've got to have a 60 GPM coming from that side. And the question to you is, what kind of water is that? That's hot return water. We've got hot 55 degree return water, 60 GPM, mixing with 120 GPM, 45 degree water. They gave me 180 GPM of what? What temperature would my 180 GPM be? you got to balance it. Roughly 48 degrees. A little less, but roughly 48 degrees. So now what have I got? I got a secondary circuit with 48 degrees supply of water. The design for my cooling coil was 45. It is not going to dehumidify. It's not going to cool properly. 
you got plenty of water, but it's not cold enough. You're giving your cooking coal 48 and you picked it for 45, it's not going to work. Return is 55. What's wrong? You didn't bounce. You didn't bounce. Everybody see that? Everybody got the numbers? How would you fix this? How would you go about fixing this problem? Well, there's a couple ways you could fix it. Two ways, really. You can change the flow rate to get a coal supply trip down to 45 degrees. How would you go about fixing this to make sure your crude coal got 45 degrees? I hope you would uh, consider uh, decreasing the secondary flow rate by putting a balancing valve or circuit setter on it and balance it to 120. Because if you do decrease the secondary flow rate to 120, you will reduce the chill water supply temp to 45 degrees. Unfortunately, what a lot of people might say is, I don't have enough 45 and they're going to increase your primary. When you do that, you've got a mess. So I should take a quick look and make sure you've got the numbers. If I did it the right way, and that is balance, and take the secondary loop back to 120, I got my 45, 55, everything is balanced, 120 coming in at 45 degrees, nothing in the common pipe, taking 120 out of 45, return is 55, 120 GP in the T number two, nothing in the common pipe, 120, 55, leave. everything's a perfect world. Great. Let's do it the other way. Let's increase the primary supply to 240 GPM. You know, common sense would tell you, I don't have enough 45 degree water, let's get more 45. And that's true, you can fix it that way. So in this case, the, 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 the guy decided that, okay, I'm going to make sure I got plenty of 45 degree water to my cooler coal, so I'm going to raise it to 240 GPM, I know that'll be enough. It would work. Sure to work. Now I've got 240 GPM going in, I did not balance the secondary loop, I left it to 180. Remember the design flow for the secondary was 120, but I left it at 180 because I didn't bounce. But by increasing the primary flow rate of up to 240, can I take 180 out at 45 and get my chill water temperature back down to 45? Absolutely. So now I've got 180, 45 going to the cooling coal, but look at your return temperature. Your return of 180 GPM out of the cooling coal is now 52. Design was 55. BTUs don't change. Q is equal to GPM plus 5 times delta T. So my delta T now is 7 degrees because my flow rate's up to 180 GPM. So now I've got 180 GPM with 52 degree order, mixing with 60 GPM of 45. They gave me 240 GPM back to my chillers that were designed for 10 degree delta T at an elevated and a reduced temperature, approximately 50 degrees. So now I've got five degrees across the loop. How's your chiller going to load up? We'll talk about that in a minute, but the answer is it will not. This is problems. So here's your basic formula we kind of went through. I think everybody understands it. If not, take your time to learn it. And let's apply it to a typical primary circuitry setup. So you start pulling some of these pieces together. And don't worry, we're going to get them all together at a high level, but I want to make sure you've got this fundamental building block of primary, secondary, in your brain, and you're real happy with it. So here we go. I got a crossover bridge here. Again, it could be hot water or chill water. In this case, I'm using chill water. Got a crossover primary bridge at 40 degrees. I hope to go back to my chill plant at 55. I'm taking out the dip uh, 750,000 BTUs. I got a delta T of 10 degrees on the secondary side. So using that Q is equal to GPM times 500 times delta T formula, what are my flow rates to one need for each set of pumps? And what would be the delta T? And I hope when you do the Q, 750,000, and you do the delta T on the secondary loop of uh, 10 degrees and solve, you come up with 150 GPM. On the primary loop, your Q is still the same. You know, energy in, it's got to be energy out. So on the primary loop, it's still 750,000 BTUs, but I'm using a 15 degree delta T. So I've reduced my flow rate to 100 GPM. Or it's 50% it's less than the other one. So you kind of see how this works with the delta T and the GPM and the BTUs. That's why you need to get in your mind that heat transfer is the same through both sides. And now we have the ability with the primary secondary loop to have different flow rates on the coils than we do in the distribution piping. That's a pretty neat idea. And we're going to take that as we go a little bit further to show you some typical good applications of primary secondary. Ladies and gentlemen, it's been fun. We appreciate your time. Have a great day. Thank you very much for your time.